It's the NFL on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Cincinnati Bengals. Next on Madden NFL 24. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League takes us to the banks of the Ohio River and Paycor Stadium in the Queen City of Cincinnati. And today, two AFC teams set to do battle. It should be a good one, as it'll be the Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gunn, happy to be with you. And CD, as we get this thing going, give the folks at home something to keep their eye on. The running game for both teams, because I think this is going to be an old-fashioned, old-school type of a game. Physical, who wins up front, who runs the ball the best and controls the clock, they will come out the victor. to do the honors and we are underway from Cincinnati and they will elect to not bring this one out as our first drive will begin at the 25 so here's the first drive now for the Jags they're led by the number one overall pick in the 2021 draft Trevor Lawrence the word is potential 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 think about this guy from the time he was in high school one of the top prospects going to college coming out of college mentioned as a generational type quarterback he looks the part. Tall, big arm, surveys the field. It can take off and run when under duress. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and ten. And they'll start on the ground. ETN. That's to about the 28. Second down coming up. I think if we put together a job description for a middle linebacker, we would start with being able to hold down things in the middle of the line of scrimmage and be able to take on blockers. But how about the guys who can go sideline to sideline and make plays? Love a guy that can do that. We saw a perfect example of it right there. On second down, here's Lawrence. Man open, that's Calvin Ridley. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville and a first down. Here's Lawrence to throw. That's caught on the left side by Kirk. So just three yards on the completion there. And that will bring up second down. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. A big part of a middle linebacker's job is being able to take on blocks and then go make plays. But the best ones, they have those big guys in front of them playing defensive line to hold blockers off of them and allow them to flow sideline to sideline and make the big hits. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals 40. That would a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. Solid opening drive so far, Charles. They've moved this football into field goal range, but you know that they want to cap this off with six and not three. Absolutely. As one of the better coaches in the league always tells me, on offense, I want to throw body blows all game long and finish it with uppercuts. Well, here are the body blows right now. He's hoping in one uppercut will take care of the end of this drive. He'll find Jones again, complete. No gain on the play, and that'll make it second down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. 
Second and ten. Now Lawrence. This is caught. It's Kirk. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. That one covers 29 yards. First down. That was an excellent read right there. Saw cover one. That means it's just a single high safety. So you know if you throw the ball to the outside part of the field, help is going to be a little bit late getting there. And he puts one out there for a big-time completion. Now a first and 10 at the 11. On first and 10, it's ETN. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Trey Hendrickson, the one who gets him on the ground. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle. That's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends. They're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play. They're holding the no game. Oh, and this one that may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. We're scoreless after one. The Jags with a football to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a third down coming up. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. And they'll try and set up the screen to ETN. And he'll be brought down well short of the first at about the nine-yard line. Three yards, all they could muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. So Lawrence will exit, and on comes Brandon McManus for the Jaguar field goal. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. The kick by McManus is good, and the Jaguars grab a 3-0 lead. So a nice opening drive on the road. You get the three points. Part of you wonders if that might hurt them later not getting into the end zone. Well, the good thing is, still first quarter, and they did come out of it with points. In a sense, they can look at it positively and say, hey, we set the pace in this one. I think that's how they'll go about it. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Here come the Bengals, and CD, of course, it's Joe Burrow out of LSU at quarterback. Hey, we all love a good story, and what we like even more, guys who can fight through adversity. Joe Burrow coming out of high school, goes to Ohio State, doesn't get a chance to start, transfers to LSU, not thought to be a top prospect, ends up the number one pick in the draft, and justifies it. Tremendous play, excellent mobility, and leadership off the charts. Burrow going to lead up the Bengals here first and 10 at their own 23. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And that'll be incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. This goes out wide for Mixon. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Five yards, now it's third and five. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Now Burrow. first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, we're used to seeing the guy that you can tell the number one receiver double covered, but how about this guy? He's double covered and finds a way to make the play for a first down. 
That's how you increase your Madden rating, right? No doubt about that at all. And you know something? I think we'll hear about that from him soon. First and ten, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. If you're in the offensive huddle, you're smiling after that play because you've certainly got them guessing now. Second and short, could they just hand it off for another big gain? Or did they take advantage of this spot to take a big shot downfield? Here now, second and four. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. And his throw is incomplete. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Now it's Burrow. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to take us to the two-minute warning. On first and ten, Joe Burrow. That's caught by the tight end, Drew Sample. Yeah, he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. Such a tough position to defend near the line, even when you add a second defender. But the big man shrugged off the extra body and made the play call a success. And Burrow's saying, let's go, let's go. From the 40 now on second down. Burrow, and he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 18. A good pick up there, 22. They forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. They're going to the air on the opening drive. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. From the red zone now, here's Burrow first down. take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. That could be an important swing right there, a touchdown of the final minute of the half to take the lead. And I like the point you just made there. Could be an important swing because now that they have the lead, if they can carry that into the locker room at the half, they'll feel really good about what they accomplished in the first two quarters. Evan McPherson for the extra point. Now this is up and good to make it 7-3. That time, a nine-play drive. And it's finished off by the touchdown from Tyler Boyd. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Taken at the goal line. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And the Jags going to go on offense now late in this first half. And with him trailing, there is still enough time to try to string a few plays together, maybe get into field goal range. And they'll throw on first down with Lawrence. Open man is Kirk, complete. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Now Lawrence to throw. A short throw to Ingram. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. 
Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. Second and a couple. Looking to throw Lawrence. And that one will fall incomplete. Clock here now, just under 30 seconds to go in this first half. No coverage bust by the defense here. They did a nice job accounting for everybody, and that led to an incompletion. So third and two, this quite possibly four down territory, though, if they're stopped. They go play action with Lawrence. The Bengal pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. Trey Hendrickson showing off his pass rush repertoire that time. But it's always easy to second guess a call, but maybe he should have just handed it off here on third and short instead of keeping it on a play action pass attempt. Now it's fourth and long and just gave the defense a lot of momentum to build on for the next series. So we've reached intermission here in a low scoring game. 7-3 is our score. As we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports halftime report. We saw a strong first half out of the quarterback, Joe Burrow. He has a touchdown pass, and that amounted to the only touchdown of the game for either team thus far. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. The Bengals set to receive. They have the lead and the football to begin quarter number three. Taking it about the one. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. The Bengal offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys are tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. They will throw on first down with Burrow. He's going to have the hook up here to chase. That'll go for a gain of seven. And it's second down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Now second and three. Burrow looking to pass. This one hauled in by Sample. Six yards the pick up, and that's a first down. The start for them near flawless. Defense gets him a three and out. Two quick pass connections on offense. So that's how a team works together. Just what you described. Get them the ball, give them a little momentum, and they're capitalizing off of that. Thanks a lot, guys. Mixon with a first down carry. And slow going there as he'll only get a yard, maybe, up to the 41. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. On second down, Burrow. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. On third down, Burrow. 
Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a going to his first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Whenever we talk about moving the sticks and controlling the football, there's a great example right there. Those are the third downs you need to convert to win football games. We're in the third quarter of this one, and this is a tight one. In order to maintain pace, keep the ball away from the other team and put points on the board, those are the plays they need to continue to convert. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. Dumps it off to Mixon. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that'll give him a short yardage situation here for second down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. And Burrow going to throw again. Got a man open. It's Chase. And Chase going to pick up a Bengals first down as he'll get this down inside the 35. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day. One score game. First and ten here. Burrow will throw. That's complete to the tight end sample. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Just need a yard here. Second and one. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Over the middle, that's caught by Chase. And Chase going to pick up a Bengals first down as he'll get this down inside the 20. That one good for seven as this long drive continues and the chains move again. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Now a second and six. Back now in Cincinnati. Here's Burrow. It's the Bengals in possession of the football and in possession of the lead as well as we start the fourth. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap. He locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. And the Bengals on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This will be third and six. Throwing the out route, finding Boyd for the completion. And he's going to be taken down, but there's a penalty flag in the backfield. Is this a hold, or did they rough the quarterback? Trailing in the fourth, this close of a game, that's a penalty you just can't afford. It's an absolute killer, and it's one that drives coaches and teammates insane. So a critical mistake, roughing the passer. Now it's first and goal. Now it's Burrow. Touchdown, Bengals! It's T. Higgins with a touchdown pass from Joe Burrow. And the Bengals will add to their fourth quarter lead. Well, that makes this a two-score ball game. And, you know, the way this thing has been going, Charles, two scores kind of feels like three or four scores. Yeah, that's a great observation. It's been a heck of a battle, hasn't it? And points have been at a premium throughout this game. So you have to wonder, is this going to be too much for them to overcome? McPherson now for the extra point. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it was T. Higgins who capped the drive with the touchdown reception. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Oh, 
And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. Well, that last touchdown we just saw, what an important one. Now it's back to a two-score deficit for this crew as they take the field here, and they are in desperate need of finding the end zone. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And he will find Ridley. That's complete. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. So they'll, of course, decline the pass interference there and wisely take the yardage. And I think defensively he's saying, I was getting away with that in the first half. Why are you making that call now? But to me, that one was pretty easy to see. I don't understand what he's upset about. I think it was the correct call. Now Lawrence on first down. Complete to Jones. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 22 yards on the catch and run, a first down. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. Completes it to Evan Ingram. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. Two chunk plays in a row. The last one was over 20 yards, and so is this one. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break, but are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball, and you put up a token press. Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time. Make it a little bit of resistance so they can't just run it right down your throat. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Boy, no problems getting down the field here on this opening drive. They've looked really sharp in the early going, and they've come up with some big plays already. Here's another that's going to set up first and goal. Off the play fake. Here's Lawrence. Got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Jaguar. Christian Kirk on the receiving end of that touchdown pass from Trevor Lawrence. And the Jaguars have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. So how about that for an answer? They get the touchdown there, and it's back to a one-score game here in the fourth. And that's what these guys have done all game long because they've scratched and slashed their way to stay in this game. And by now, we should all realize they're not going away. Now the pressure again swings to their defense because they're going to need to find some way to get the ball back. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. This taken in at the goal line. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. The Bengals getting set to go. And with that last touchdown, I mean, we're set up for a good finish here. Some things to consider, Charles. Obviously, it's a very close game here in the fourth quarter. Defensively, they've got all three timeouts in their back pocket. So the chess match really ramps up, doesn't it? Because in these situations, what do you do? Do you run the ball and kill the clock here? Or do you try and bury them with another score? And how about defensively? Do you use your timeouts as early as opportunity? Or wait till you hit the two-minute warning? So there's a lot going into this one. Let's see how each side goes about their strategy. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. 
So the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They've got a first and ten as they look to try and finish this one off. They try to eat some clock with Mixon. And he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Another yard would probably put this thing in the books. It's second and one. Again, it's Mixon. Shifts by him. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Mixing up the middle. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he will have a Bengals first down. And it's celebration time on that sideline. And they've earned it. And they will take a knee here. Ball at the 24 and a second at 11. Out of the shotgun, they run with Mixon. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. I guess the simple question, why not just take a knee there? I don't understand either why you would take any sort of a chance. We've seen it happen in the game of football. It doesn't matter whether you've watched high school, college, or the NFL. Some people get a little greedy, try to get that extra running play in, and it can backfire on them. Burrow down to a knee, and that should be the final act of this one. I don't know about you, partner, but watching them take the knee there and finish this one off, I feel like I'm going to be sore tomorrow. This was one bruising affair, low scoring, but my kind of football. Not a work of art, but maybe in your world, a little bit of a work of art. You like the defensive side. I thought it was pretty. I can't help myself. I thought it was pretty. And it ends in a kneel down as the clock rolls down to zeros. Well, you really can't ask for much more than what we just had here. Not only a close game that went down to the wire, Charles, but a clean one, too. No turnovers in this contest. And I think you're exactly right about that. To me, this is just a pair of offenses trying to find the slightest bit of separation from each other. And they were both hoping that the other side would make the big mistake first. But today, neither side made that mistake. And what we got, a very entertaining game throughout. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Bengals as we say so long from Cincinnati.